Welcome to this episode. My guest, Gordon Graham, comes to us from the UK. He was a successful singer, musician, and he suffered a reaction to a drug which caused a near-death experience. Now, here's the caveat, and that is that when he entered into this space, this hellish space, he went through a journey in coming to know Jesus as his Messiah. His seven-year-old son gave him a message, and you'll hear that and see that at the end of this, which will actually actually be amazing. So, Gordon, it's great to have you with us today. Thanks for having me, Randy. Great to be here. Well, Gordon, let's start with what happened to send you into this hellish place. So I was 45 years old. I was, um, the music career was gone, had gone pretty downhill by that point, but um, I was just having a bit of a hiatus in my life. I'd spiritually been a seeker for quite a long time, but I'd stopped seeking. And um, <clears throat> this evening I had some downtime. I smoked a, it was kind of like a substitute marijuana kind of thing. It wasn't marijuana, it was something called a legal high. And um, what I didn't realize was that it was actually an extremely potent drug. And um, after I smoked it in the evening, um, I started to get palpitations in my heart and it started to beat increasingly hard. I started to feel like something was something wrong was happening here. It was beating out of my chest. I was thinking, I think this is pretty bad. I didn't want to panic because I thought it would make it worse. I went to the bathroom. I splashed some water in my face. I couldn't feel the water. I couldn't feel the cold of the water. I was entirely numb. So I felt like I wanted to lie down. As I laid down, I felt like it was almost like I there was an inclination to lose consciousness. I was trying to fight it, but I felt so kind of exhausted by this feeling that I started to go with it. I closed my eyes and I started to feel like I was almost being sucked out of my body into some kind of space. And because it was it was not pleasant, I'd open my eyes again and then I'd get too tired and I'd go with it again. By about the third time, I just went, I'm just going to go with this. I just can't fight it anymore. So I found myself in this blackness. Um, it was a kind of all pervasive. It seemed to be through me. I had no sense of my body, but I had a sense of self. Um, this blackness was just thick and kind of, it was totally supernatural. I knew that this was not normal. I knew this was not kind of a normal predicament. Very quickly, I ascertained certain kind of um, information about my situation. I don't know where I was getting that information. It was almost like sometimes I say the place itself had intelligence. It's like whatever I seem to want to know, it would tell me. I knew that this was eternity. This was forever. I knew that if I, if I didn't get out of here, I was stuck here forever. I knew that you that were alive were on the other side of some kind of wall, some kind of, you were outside of it somewhere and I could not possibly reach you. I quickly went on to think, this is death. This is the absence of life. I, I, I realized that life was a kind of gift and that gift was not in this place. That was not, it was not, I could still exist without life, which was a strange kind of, I mean, <clears throat> it certainly wasn't pleasant. It was a, it was a horrible, growing, lonely kind of, that phrase from the Bible, we, weeping and gnashing of teeth made a lot of sense to me. Incredible regret. I also thought after that, this is hell. This is this is a place called hell. This 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 is it just I just thought that's where I am. And um, I kind of knew I, I kind of drew the I just seemed to know that nothing that I'd done in my life, whether it was good or bad or whatever, had had made any difference from me not being there. It was like I knew that I could have been a really, really good person, but I would 
I still ended up here. I had somehow missed the point of life and this is where it ends up. I knew I was meant to be there. That's when I went, there is a God. And I realized that I just knew that he was somewhere and this is his absence. This is where he's not. And then the sort of, which was a shock to me, he's the God in the Bible. He's the God in that black, dusty book on the shelf. You know, he's not, he's not the other gods. He's this God. I knew it was him. And I knew that this, this kind of cosmic thing that was going on with me was all to do with him. And that was really the revelation I had in that place. So um, thankfully, the next morning I came to and I was um, still alive. Um, and so you were next- just, uh, just to clarify, Gordon, for your awareness that this was the God of the Bible, Mm-hmm. You had really had no context uh, in terms of which wh- who God was, whether it be Buddha, no. Hindu, the no. God of the Bible. That was you were kind of neutral in that respect, weren't you? Or agnostic? I thought I thought God. I thought if there was a God, I thought there were. Pro- I thought I believed in spiritual things, but I thought God would be a lot more kind of sci-fi. I thought a lot. He'd be a lot more cosmic, a lot more kind of. Um, but. I realized that, no, it's very black and white. It's the God of the Bible. It's it's exactly how, you know, what I've seen brought up, brought, brought up in the West, you know, when I was at school, you'd see biblical things and I'd, I'd seen films and stuff. And I thought, it's him. He's he is He is the God. He's the one. He's responsible for all the things, you know. Uh, atoms and life and cells and anything, you know, unconsciousness, all of these things, he's the one. It's the guy that's responsible for the Bible. I just knew it as a just a dead fact. You know, this place was telling me it's almost like it was a summation of what he's not, so I knew who he was. It's the strangest kind of thing. So the next thing that happened to me was that... um, I came to, I started checking out, because I was pretty unnerved, um, YouTube videos, kind of afterlife videos, things like that. But what shocked me was that other people had had what they called hell experiences. And I thought when I watched them, you know, a lot of them talked about the darkness. It was forever. You wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy, which I'd thought when I was there. A, A lot of similar things. And I thought, I think this is for real, I think there's something really going on here. So I decided that I would, um, I thought in my kind of like uneducated kind of Christian mind, I thought I just need to get baptized because I've never been baptized as a child. I thought, I think that's how it gets fixed. I think that's how you, <laughs> you get it all sorted out. And then I can, you know, get on with my life or something like that. So I got in touch with the Baptist church and, um, told them a little bit of my story and I said, I just want to get baptized, you know, just privately, no one watching, nobody involved, just, just dunk me in the water, take me out and I'll say goodbye. And the guy said to me, well, it doesn't really work like that. He said, you, 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 you get baptized as a recognition that you are, you become a Christian. So I'm thinking a Christian, I thought that does not fit with my, you know, worldview or anything. I thought, me become a Christian, it just seemed like the most kind. I, I, even though I'd thought the, it's the God of the Bible and I've just been to hell, I still thought becoming a Christian seemed a little bit like a f- bit step too far for me, you know. But anyway, he prayed for me and he took me through the sinner's prayer, you know, which is a basic confession of Christ as Lord and um, that I'm a sinner and things like that. And I was expect I was waiting for that kind of fireworks, you know, going off, some big wow factor. But um, nothing happened. Although as I went home, I started to kind of over the next week, I started to feel pretty uneasy. Something was unsettled in me. Something didn't feel right. I felt like there was this kind of stormy sea inside of me moving around. And I kept, I started um, finding myself confessing sin 
I started to privately get onto my face and start thinking of anything I could think of in my life that um, that that just that, that might. I just thought maybe if I get this out of the way, that's the next thing I need to do, you know. <clears throat> and um, needless to say, up to that point, nothing really happened. I went to church on that Sunday because he'd invited me, that pastor had invited me. I wasn't saved yet. And my experience in the church was that it was just not for me at all. I didn't feel it. I just thought these people are really nice and everything, but I just felt like they were just too folksy, you know, just too kind of, <laughs> not like, no, no, I just couldn't hack it. Not the kind of music that you were accustomed no, to. Or no, the, no, 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 no. <laughs> you just so weren't uh, jiving with the music, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so basically... I came home. Uh, I was. I was at. I, I, I'm a house. In the subsequent week, in the middle of the week, I'm in the house. I'm. Um, I'm just thinking about these things. Something is not right. Something has got me since this experience. And um, I was sat in the study room um, in the house, and I was just kind of, you know thinking about this, oh, becoming a Christian, oh, you know, I'm a sinner, and what does that mean, you know, Jesus, what is all this about, you know, I just was kind of turning it around my mind, then out of nowhere, I'm just literally flung across the room, and I'm on my face in this kind of position of worship, basically, I'm feeling this tremendous power, um, and I'm aware that there's a figure, but I can't see who it is. I can just feel this, the sense of a shape of somebody. I'm at their feet, so to speak. And I'm just kind of feeling the power and being overwhelmed with emotion. But I can't put my finger on the emotion. It's just, but the first, yeah, I start to get this feeling that it's God. I'm with God. This is God. It's the sense that it's the only way I can put it. I can put it is that as he seemed to be probing deeply into me, he was knowing me, and as he was knowing me, I was knowing him because it was a transaction was taking place. I knew that he was God because he was knowing me. That's the only way I can kind of put it into words. So I knew this was God, and and although I didn't have the words at the time. If I was to say now, you know, using my Christian language, I'd say it was the holiness that I was getting. He was holy. He was magnificent. He was the holiness meant he was really, really scary, but also incredibly sort of um, what's the word um, like invigorating or exciting or something. It was like mixed feelings. I didn't feel bad or anything. But then he started to bring to mind um, that I had denied Jesus, and it was it was some it was it seemed to be as much as I could ascertain was that you know who Jesus is. It was like even as a child, maybe when I'd seen films or I'd had a, seen something in the Bible or something, he said. You, I, I did. I did warm to Jesus. I, I was. I, I. I didn't feel any kind of resistance. I thought Jesus was cool. I thought Jesus was like somebody enigmatic and attractive, and and so it was like he was saying that was enough, you know. And you've you've been turning away from me ever since. It was that kind of sense, and I was in bits. I was in remorse. I was. I started wailing and I said really telling him I was so sorry. I was so sorry. And as I was doing that, I was really realizing it's Jesus. Jesus is it. Jesus is, is the one. And it was like all those other gods and faces and figures. I thought they're just nothing. They are nothing. It's Jesus. It's absolutely him. And I was thinking, of course, of course it was Jesus. I remember thinking, of course it was Jesus. It couldn't be anyone else. I just thought it couldn't be anybody else it was it was like it was just hitting me like a train so um i'm sort of going through this emotional kind of wreck 
thing. I wasn't aware too much of, I wasn't aware at all, actually, of him dealing with anything else, but I knew something powerful was going on. And this presence started to recede. Um, and I was wiping my face. I was a complete mess. And then I heard words almost coming from a different place. I, I Almost coming like, I've said it's like, you know, uh, um, an angelic fanfare, a kind of announcement. And it was, Christ comes as a king, clothed in glory. How shall he lead you that you are not clothed in righteousness? And I was like coming to my, sitting in my chair and thinking, what on earth? So you mean? heard this, was it audible or was it an impression that you had? It was just, it was like a still small voice. It was, it was, it was just something I just heard. It was like, I didn't hear it like, audibly as in I've heard God in different ways, but this was like, just, I, I knew those words, those words just plunked into my mind. You know, they just went bloop. Would you I mean, mind I, restating that? What did he say Christ, to you? Christ, Christ comes as a King clothed in glory. How shall he lead you that you are not clothed in righteousness? And I thought, have I done something wrong? Have I failed the test? Have I not done it? Because it seemed like it was saying, I can't, I can't deal, with, I can't work with you if you if you've not, you know, I couldn't work out what it meant. I was, I mean, it was quite, it's quite a complex. <laughs> what does that mean if you've, if you've got no idea? And and so it must have been the Holy Spirit that led me to do the right, to do what I needed to do, because the next thing I thought was. I need to I need, I need to know what repentance means. I just felt I needed to look up the word repentance. So I looked up the word repentance and it said turning away, turning away from sin, turning turning towards God. And I thought I've turned I, I need to turn away from my life and dedicate myself to him. I thought that's what it must mean. So I decided to make a statement. So I left the house and walked down. I live near the seafront. I walked to the seafront. Uh, it was quite a windy day. The waves were roaring and everything. So I really shouted and said, you can have me. You can have everything. You can have it. You can have my whole life. You can just have me. I'm yours. You know, you, you can have it. Have everything. Take what you want. Take everything. Take my dreams. Take everything I've been trying to desperately make, make of my life. Take everything. And um, as I walked back up the beach, not really feeling anything, I thought in my head, I wonder if I've done the right thing. That was my specific thought. I went, I wonder if I've done the right thing. So I came home. Um, it was maybe like, it must have been about half past three in the afternoon. And I didn't. I hadn't remembered that my son was getting dropped off from school. So the doorbell rung and I got the door and um, he came in. I was like, he's seven years old. And I went, hiya, all right. And he goes, hiya. And he would just like walk past me, you know, get on his knees. He All he ever done was he drew pictures of Batman, Spider-Man, stuff like that. That's all he done. I mean, he was just obsessed, you know, and... I just let him get on with that. I went back into the kitchen, had a cup of coffee, staring out the window, just thinking about this experience. I've just met God. You know, what's going on? I was, I, it was still unfinished. You know, I, I was thinking, what is going on? And um, I must have been about, literally a couple of minutes and I felt a little tug on my shirt. And I looked down and I went, all right. And he said, this is for you. And he handed me this picture that he'd drawn, which, of course, I expect to be kind of superhero or something like that. And um, this is the picture. So I'm going to hold this up. You'll have to direct me to uh, what you can see. So this is the picture. I don't know um, what you've got. Yes. So and at the top okay. there, it reads. Can you read yeah, that for so, us, please? So, so, this, so this is a picture of Jesus on the clouds as a uh -huh. king. And the speech bubble coming out of his mouth says, my son, you done the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> he would have had no, 
no concept of what that meant, probably. And, oh, and that, that's incredible. That's amazing. That's a miracle. My son, you've done the, the right thing. That's not that's not Spider-Man or Batman. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is a miracle. So, and, and what's what's beneath that? Picture and the bottom there. is a little Calvary cross with a little man on it, little Jesus on it. It says, Mr. Christ. Wow. <laughs> and, and did and, he have um, any context? And, no. And no. Of, of Jesus or the king of kings? Well, he'd know, he'd, know, he'd know Jesus like it would, it would come up in school. But, I mean, when he'd done this, um, he actually couldn't understand why I, he he couldn't understand why I was so excited and so over them he, he thought he'd done something clever really really good and he didn't know why he, I remember when he talked about it later he says I couldn't understand what I, why I, why you were so why you were so happy because I, I mean it must have been pure holy spirit I mean he must have just been in the zone you know what I mean being used by the holy spirit wow. and I said to him you know after the game I was in shock I mean I mean real shock I was thinking, what is going on? This is just, whoa, you know? And I said, why, why did you do that? Why, why did you, I says, why did you give me that? And he went, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes, you know, Jesus uh, suffer unto the children, pay attention to them for theirs is the kingdom of God. That's, Amen. that's how he confirmed, he confirmed what you were starting to doubt Mm. through what the Holy Spirit had given to your son, your seven-year-old son. It was just wow. incredible. I mean, I, I, I was my, I, I didn't, I just thought, what, I, I started thinking, God's just done everything you can possibly do to confirm me that he's real. You know, he's <laughs> just done it all. He's given me a miracle. I've met him. He's shown me the afterlife. <laughs> you know, he's shown me all these things. <laughs> And um, yeah, and I remember really the, the, the it, I didn't I didn't experience a sense of something had changed yet until the next Sunday. This the following Sunday, I went to church, and as I walked into church, I mean, I just fit, I could see. I've never had this sense, but I could see light around people. I could see light around all the Christians, and I felt like. I'm one of you guys. I just felt this tremendous love for all of the Christians. I felt like it was like joining the the hive or something. I just thought, wow, you know, it was <laughs> entire, that's when I knew I was born again. That's when I knew I was born again. And that's in contrast to the the prior time that you were in church mm-hmm. when you felt kind of I divorced felt, from the music yeah. and what was going on. Yeah, now I you just felt, felt a part of it. Yeah, I just felt like this is just not the kind of place that I want to be. This is absolutely, this. I can't do this. I can't do this Christian thing. Whereas, you know, as soon as the Holy Spirit comes in, you know, everything, it's the same. You know, the Bible is just a dead book. But then, you know, um, it's not a dead book. You know, it's a dead, when you're not a believer, you know, it's just a book. But then the Holy Spirit comes in, it suddenly comes to life. It's the most important thing you have. And, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, physical object, so, um, yeah, amen. I'm just wowed at how God, step by step in the process, when you were in the dark in this hellish mm. place mm. with no life, mm. that you had this uh, visitation by the Lord. Mm. And then that sent you uh, on a journey after mm. you were revived or you came back. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that journey had brought you to a, kind of an inquisitive nature to the mm-hmm. point where you have, have felt pulled by the Holy Spirit. And then even so, at the very end, where he gives you this word, mm-hmm. you're still doubting, is this the real thing? And you come home mm-hmm. and your son, your seven-year-old mm-hmm. son, gives you this uh, this drawing. Mm-hmm. And he did, so your seven-year-old son, he didn't know what he was doing at the time, he just knew that it felt good that he was giving he knew it that, to you. He knew, he knew that some, he'd done something that had pleased me. And he he, he just he just thought, what did I do? What was it? He, was try, he said, I was trying to figure out what was I done that made dad so happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, but I mean, I, I often say to people, you know, um, I was defeated at the cross. I mean, 
what I mean by that is I was all in. After that, I was just like, I'm all in. I am I am completely 100 percent up for this. I don't, I want, I want everything you've got. I want everything you've got. I want everything you can give me. I want the whole thing. I want to know it all. I want, you know what I mean? I really, really um was sold out once after that. And your your son's reaction as we wrap this up now, I'm curious, mm. how old is he now? Is- my son is 17 and he is a spirit filled born again Christian. Ah, okay. Well, that answers the question. Then. Yeah, he got saved at 13. Saved at 13. So Big time. he's an yeah. on fire believer, his yeah. uh, dad <laughs> and uh, both of you. And, and you share yeah. in, uh, in a kindredness of your story and the fact that he was confirming something you heard from the Lord. Yeah. So, so now uh, you are still a, a musician. Uh, do you sing I'm, still now? I'm yeah. I started writing, um, especially over the lockdown. I wrote. I started. I wrote a lot of worship songs. Yeah, a lot of worship songs. So, who knows? I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, it's some. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, down to God. It's God's. God's. Uh, it's God's choice what I do with that. Well, Gordon Graham, you can look him up. We'll have it on the screen there how he spells his name with an E. And you. And the worship music we've got, I have a sense that your worship music is so inspired that, uh, mm. you know, we've got it. We'll be uh, lifted in the spirit because God has had his hand on you mm. all throughout this process to bring uh, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit uh, to those that hear from you and your music. This has been a great, great inspiration, Graham. Uh, through this process, uh, mm-hmm. we're coming to a close here, mm-hmm. but what would you say was the most, the greatest revelation that the Lord had given you through this process? The greatest revelation is that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Jesus Christ is the alpha and the omega. He is the almighty and he is God. And he did walk in the flesh on this earth and he came to save men and women. Um, and he's the only way to salvation. That's the revelation that I got. Yes. And this is coming from a, a man who uh, didn't probably give two thoughts to, uh, to Jesus <laughs> or maybe two, but uh, just passing yeah. thoughts. And now you are uh, truly born anew. We want to thank you again, Gordon, for being with us today. And uh, the great news is for those who are in Christ Jesus, Be of good cheer, because heaven is in your future. Until next time, take care and God bless. Thank you for watching this episode of Heaven Encounters. If you'd like more information, you can go to Randy K Ministries at randyk.org. Take care and God bless.